Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in the between our two corn patches here. We've got some, uh, both of these are heirloom variety corn. That's Country Gentleman. This is an heirloom variety. The name escapes me right now, but you can see the difference here between the structure of the corn. We've got big, thick stalks in this here, and some of them, as I can't even reach the height of that, and I'm Five eight plus or a five nine plus some stretching of the arm, so we've got incredible height there. We also got some good height over here, but you can tell on the stalks they're much more spindly than those. Now, a couple reasons for this: that bed there has been planted in that specific location. This is the second year. That's not recommended, and we will ha we have results of why that's not recommended. This here is the first year of planting this bed. We've added a lot of amendments to the soil, built the soil up, and planted. Obviously, we didn't add enough amendments to this soil because of the spindliness and the small structure of the corn. Now, we've made an executive decision here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens that this will be the last year we will grow corn in the garden, simply because the return on investment is not worth the effort. We have successfully figured out how to grow, harvest, and, and have great ears of corn. But if you've gone to your local farms, farm, uh, farmer's market or, or uh, organic grocery store, you can buy a large quantity of sweet corn for a very minimal price, much cheaper than you can grow it in the garden here. And that's what we have decided to do from now on. But this is something that we, we couldn't have done earlier. Many years ago, we had problems and struggled. We were able to be very successful. Now, I talked about reasons why you don't want to grow stuff in the same spot year after year. And this is a perfect example with this gentleman uh, heirloom sweet corn. This is corn smut. I'm going to pull it off the ear. It is um, an unpleasant looking item here. Now, what the corn smut is a a fungal, it's a disease, it's a, a, re, a result of a couple of factors and, and it is a delicacy in some uh, dishes in the Hispanic or Mexican uh, cuisine. Uh, northern far, uh, farmers in the northern United States will grow this and make this happen for a specific purpose and that is to sell to Hispanic restaurants and they do create dishes with corn smut. Well, the reason why it occurs, there's several factors in the, in, the, in the occurrence of this. One, very wet spring, followed by a dry summer, followed by more wet weather. Not really a factor here because we've had irrigation on this on a regular basis all summer long. The second factor, which is an a, overabundance of nitrogen in the soil. When we planted this bed initially last year, we added a high level of organic fertilizer. It had a very high level of nitrogen, about a 25, uh, 1917, I believe, something in that, something around 25, 32. This year, the same, the same type of fertilizer, the same high number, that 25 to 32 percent nitrogen, we added to the soil. Well, this is the result. Now, this is not occurring on every ear, but this has occurred on about half dozen to 10 ears of the corn. I can pull an ear off here that is ready to go. Eh, yeah. And this ear is perfectly fine when it comes to eating sweet corn. There's nothing wrong with that ear at all. A very well structured ear. There's a little less ear, a little less uh, kernels on the high end here. And that's just because of pollination. This was on the outer edge on the back side there. So typically they're going to be less pollinated uh, than central corn because the tassels pollinate the, the ears. The pollen falls on the hairs, which indicates each hair is uh, represented per kernel. So it's not occurring on every ear, but it has occurred on several ears. Now there are recipes online that you can use to cook this down if you feel or find or want to experiment with it. Again, it is an edible portion if cooked and processed correctly, and Hispanics or the Mexican community and uh, chefs are very well known in order to, uh, and are able to do that correctly. Uh, we're not going to try to sell this because we don't have enough of it, and if this is occurring on your corn, 
that it could be the fact you're playing it in the same spot year after year. You've had a wet spring, dry summer, wet return, uh, a wet later sp uh, summer, and that's what also occurs. But most likely uh, on our situation, well, I know on our situation, it is because there's been too much nitrogen added to the soil. So this bed, as the corn matures, we will harvest it, and then we will not plant corn again uh, uh, for as far as we know, as long as we can think about and we'll put something else in this area. Now, what would be recommended in an area that contains a high level of nitrogen? Greens. This might be the best spot for us to put kale and Swiss chard come next year because those are leafy greens and green is uh, what the uh, gr nitrogen is what enables the plant to have good lush green foliage. And that is would be an ideal plant to put in this location for a couple of years in order for it to be, uh, suck the nitrogen back out of the soil down to more of a res uh, re uh, normal level. So that's, that's probably what we will do there. But corn smut, that's what's happening uh, and that's the reasons why it's happening. It can be eaten if you so choose to. You do not want to compost this. Another thing, if you do see this occurring on your corn, go ahead and remove it as soon as you see it because this can these will continue to grow and they can open up or you know they pop and infect other uninfected ears of corn that are around this particular ear. So keep that in mind. If you see this, get it out of there because it will affect other ears and you don't want to compost this. You just want to dispose of it in your trash and waste. So corn smut, sweet corn, that's what's happening. We are in. For more information, please visit the Wisconsin Vegetable